I remember uh, in 2001, I was working out of town, and I was in a small hotel room, and, uh, and the man told me was uh, witnessing to me about Christ, and I'm sure the lady did. Uh, he, he showed me some things in the scripture, and that Bible was that lasted like four hours. That's how I was at the home kind of day, four hours. But it seemed like it was 30 minutes. It was just, it was just like that. It was the next thing I was at 10, 2 30 at night. And uh, so the next day, we was, I was fine with that. But, uh, and, and we went through so much stuff, and, and I we was like, oh, we're going to this in the morning. And we forgot some of the stuff that God showed us and all that. And then about six months after that, in August uh, 2001, on a Sunday morning, I was approximately about right here. After in the morning altar call, and um, I was just worshiping God, and all of a sudden I had my hands up, and, and the Lord, uh, I saw these, because uh, sometimes I saw these three white balls, spheres, and that, and they were kind of going around like a juggler's ball. All of a sudden they came together as one, and then, and then the power of God just came upon me, and I started speaking in tongues, and that's how I got with the Holy Ghost. I didn't have a problem with, uh, I didn't have any questions really about the Trinity. And also, we may have the Trinity. Some people think there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. But that's just all who God is. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and I'm a father. But if I go write a check, if I go write a check, I can't write, here's just a line, here's a hundred bucks from dad. Thanks for what you said. You know, they're going to want my name. His name's Jesus. And that's what happened to Adam. That boy, I got to the door of the Holy Ghost by Jesus Christ. He died a perfect life for us. He, he lived a perfect life and died, died for us. Going back to Moses in Exodus 33 18, he also asked, he said, in Exodus 33 18, he said, I beseech thee, I urge thee, show me thy glory. Here's the leader of Israel. Just got done seeing all these miracles, these ten, these ten plagues. Got done. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? He's 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 ahead of three million people, and he's about to, he's about to walk through the Red Sea, and it's part on the left and on the right. And I don't know how tall it is. I don't know how deep it is. So that'd be awesome just seeing the uh, sharks and the. Uh, I mean, I always picture sharks right there. You know, just looking at you like, come on, buddy, come on, step through there. You know, but he's just stepped through there with the people and faith and all that, and God just bothered to go on through. But here he is. He, after, after all that, after the plagues and, 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 and walking through the Red Sea, then he asked, God, show me thy glory. And the Lord showed him his glory. And, and from then on, he, he just kept on living for God. You know, sometimes in our life, you know, we need to see God's glory. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what you've been through last, this past week or last week. And maybe you haven't asked it in a while. God, show me your glory. God, show me your glory. Because I want to know who you are. God loves each and every one, one of you so very much and wants to know you. He's not, he's not running from us. He came to us in the form of a baby. He came to us gentle. In Matthew 1 21, it tells us, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know, our flesh is going to bring us a lot of saviors. Uh, I know very little about Hinduism, but one thing I've heard, they have 33,000, 33,000 gods. Can you imagine they got a God for a chair, a God for a bottle, a God for a shirt, a God for Bibles, a God for a Can you imagine? I'm glad I have one God who's able to handle everything, anything that I can give to him. Uh, you know another thing I found interesting I heard this years ago? Earrings. You don't know what earrings are, man. Right? You, know, you, know, you, know you know the origin? You know where earrings came from? It came from 2,000 years back. People were scared, so they made up these earrings and they were supposed to ward off people's spirits. People, people will make stuff up because they don't want to, they don't know God, they don't want to turn to God. They will make stuff up trying to, trying to make themselves go through this world, you know. You know, like when you, they be sitting at a buddy's house or the camping or you move into a new home, you're trying to sleep and all of a sudden you're, oh, what was that? That was the boogie man. That was the boogie man. You know, it's like, no. And then your buddy says, hey, man, that's my water bottle. They just, they just kind of love you back. Or are you sitting there all of a sudden? Here, I don't know if I do it. I can't do it. You hear that? Oh, what is that? What is that? It's just some trees on the window, man. You know, your mind is the racing stuff. Me scared? How many of you get scared? You get thinking weird thoughts afterwards, like, oh, I thought of that? Oh, wow. You know, how many of you ever thought, I'm not the only one. You know, so, <laughs> we used to think of some crazy stuff, you know? But you know what? God gives us his word to show us who he is. John 5, 43, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not, but others shall come in his own name, he will receive. God focused 
Do I have direction? Do I have determination to know my Savior? Do I have focus? Do I have direction? Do I have determination to know my Savior? Praise God. Praise God. I don't know this message is for somebody. I was really laying head on me when I was trying to get this prepared. John 14, 26 also tells us what the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. What's his name, church? Amen. Amen. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. Revelations 3 and 20 tells us, Behold, I stand door not. We gotta be waiting, church. We gotta be waiting. If any man hear my voice, we gotta be listening, church. We gotta be listening. We gotta be listening. And open the door. We gotta, it takes action. Y'all ain't sitting in bed right now, right? No, you took action, you got up and came to church. I'm so glad you did too. You know? And, and I will come in to him. He wants to give you the Holy Ghost. He didn't just die on the cross and say, have to be your friend. He didn't die on the cross to give you the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he wants to suffer you. He wants to feed you hope when it's taken away. He wants to feed you love when it's been lost or ripped away. He wants to feed you happiness when it's been taken. He's got to open the door. And he says, and he with me. God comes knocking. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, my wife, she didn't come knocking. We didn't come knocking. Her week, we found each other online. In a week, I was three weeks and we up one morning and I was like, hey, baby. <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. I don't think it happened for anybody here, did it? We just wake up with a crow or the, uh, what's that? I'm sorry. What's that called? Uh, the, the crane. The crane is, pff, here's your man. Here's your husband. Or here's your wife. Uh, we didn't go looking for it. But God, he's just there and I've been waiting, you know? Take another look at what you're going to do and ask yourself, who is he going to be? You know, Pastor preached on a couple of weeks ago, really stuck with me. When we're going through stuff and we're going through temptations, don't look at that problem. Say, whoa, 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 get back up here. Why am I going to do that? Why am I going to do that? Who is the Lord to me? Am I putting my focus on God or am I putting my focus on, on, on the problem? That problem is going to fade away. But your trust, your salvation, your faith in God is going to be eternal. Come on, John. It's going to be eternal. He's here to not trying to get our attention. He's looking, knocking, and wanting. My last verse here, Revelation 17, 14. It's the last part of the verse. I love this verse. It says, And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Called, chosen, and faithful. God chooses us. God calls us. We all we gotta do is be faithful. We only gotta be one third of that scenario. You got these two thirds. So I just ask if you really want to know him more, if you really want to know the Lord Jesus more, because we can't ever know him enough. You can't ever know your spouse enough. You can't just say, hey baby, I love you. I know you, but I want to give you the Lord. It's a constant relationship. So I urge you, if you want to know him more, could you stay in and ask God to open my eyes and my heart? It's the eyes of understanding. The only more sensitive, the only more attentive. God help me want to hear the voice of my life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, let everybody stand. Let everybody stand. You can stretch out in the feet. Praise the Lord. I want to get the Lord. I want to get to know the Lord better. Praise God. For the way to start to rise up and extend your hands. Reaching up to Him. The Bible says that you'll draw nigh unto Him. He will meet you. He will draw nigh unto you. Somebody just stand under your breath. I want to know you more. I want more Jesus. I want more Jesus. Well, I promise you'll never go wrong by getting more of Jesus.
say, fairly skilled, but I'm swollen and difficult to walk. I've been praying all morning for the Lord to heal me. I'm feeling it because I want to see him heal. I'll be the Lord to heal me. Let it come. During that song, during today, but it feels pretty good right now. I have no pain as I jump over the wall right now. I have no pain. Praise God, I'm asking God to continue that healing. I don't want to push you too hard, but <laughs> stop jumping so much. Praise the Lord, I want to welcome you again to the New Hope Church. I'm so glad that you came today. I know that you could have gone anywhere else in the city, you could have done other things, but you came here. Um, we are going to preach on the subject of the drunkard today. I've been telling you that I wanted to preach about it for a while to give you the scripture of why we've made some of the changes that we've made in this church. And uh, the next one I'm going to be preaching, I'm hoping next week, depending on whether Mark's going to be here Sunday or not, is finally going to be the name of Jesus. Uh, you said you want to get to know him better? If you want to get to know Jesus, better, you better be here next Sunday. Because if that's the one I'm from, I'm going to the preaching parts here because I want Mark and I to go over it afterwards. Uh, but bless God, I am asking you to be here faithfully on Sundays. Because if you're here at least every Sunday, you're going to know better. If you want to know me from better than that, be here on Wednesday. If you want to take even one more step, why don't you just come on Tuesday? Why don't you just do that and be here for prayer and Bible study? Uh, I had to cancel the last two Bible studies because I had to pick up the girls one weekend. I was in Albuquerque last weekend. I don't know what I was doing, but I went to the girls for a final family vacation uh, with all of us before CQ so went back to his mom. Praise God. One more announcement I need to make is I've had uh, uh, Sister Cheyenne. Would you raise your hand, Sister Cheyenne? They came over to my house yesterday uh, and spent a couple hours with me and my wife. We had a great time. They are a wonderful young couple. And uh, you know, we were able to talk about things and I was guiding them and helping them and some of the stuff about being young married. Um, and she has this really profound experience with God in her prayer, and I was helping her understand it uh, as best I could because I don't know everything. Uh, but she asked, you know, uh, she wanted to uh, get together with Sister White and have an additional prayer night on Thursday evenings. So they're going to be here at 6 this on Thursday. So every Thursday night, the church is open as well for prayer. That excites me. Or maybe some of you can't be here on Tuesday, or maybe you can be here on Thursday. So we're going to open up the church twice a week for prayer. Oh, that's good. That's good. We got youth coming up. We got two youth from coming up. We got prayer coming up. We got things happening in this church. A band coming in. We're going to be able to get uh, uh, some food. We use that band to not only deliver very uh, people to church, but also deliver food. Uh, we're also offering our van to Tohatchee Church. Uh, Brother Jimmy Gonzalez has a, a Jimmy's dad has a shop, and they can hopefully fix the things that need to be fixed for the console or find a part. Um, if Jimmy's dad is willing to do that for that church, we're willing to give them that bus. The Lord convicted me of I was going to charge them the same thing I paid for it. The Lord said, Why would you charge them what I gave you for them? Why would you charge them anything? This is in the shower. And I said, oops, sorry, Lord. So we are not going to target. We're just going to give it to them because we want to pass on the blessing. Hopefully they can get it fixed. They have the ability to shop. They got a shop there. They can probably find the mark. And from what I understand, it's not, a, it's not a huge fix. It's not a, a huge deal. Praise God. I'm going to your Bibles to Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Sorry, I've had to stand for a few minutes. Brother White. If you go to the fr a freezer and bring me that water that's in there, got one shilling uh, right now. Uh, Luke 21, 34 says, that take heed to yourselves, lest any, well, let me just before I stop, what does take heed mean? Watch out! Beware! Watch what you're doing! Take heed to yourselves, lest any time, at any time your hearts be overcharged with Surveying, I don't know if you said that right. You know what I said that word? Sounds a little like surveying to me, but I've gotten words wrong before. I didn't, look, I didn't see that. I was looking for the next one, which is my, my text. Uh, usually I'll look up how to say that and 
but I'm going to tell you what it means. But that's not really what my text is. My text is, and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares. And it's telling us, do not be overcharged. Watch. Oh my goodness, it's cool. Watch. I'll bang it up a little bit. You better watch. I preach the sermon called that much. You better watch. If you don't be overtaking, your heart doesn't become overcharged with drunkenness and cares of this life. We'll leave it alone because I don't need it. And so that day comes upon you unawares. And before you know it, let me ask you a question. If you never pick up a drink, can you become drunk? That's how you watch. If you never pick up a drink, then you can never become a drunk. So when it comes to the drunkard, question mark, how are we going to find out what the word says about the drunkard and how to react to that situation? Let's pray. Jesus, we are just so excited to know that we have a direction from your word. When we're not quite sure which direction to go or, or what we should do or how we should respond to a situation, I'm so glad that the word of God always gives me a way out or an understanding or a direction, always tells me what I need to know in order to succeed. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for that direction and order my steps so that I can continue to obey you in Jesus' name and the church said amen. amen. Let's clap on the Lord one more time before we receive it.
So the idea of uh, being a drunkard or becoming a drunkard or what, how do we react towards drunkards comes from this. Uh, we had, let me see if I have to do one more question. Let me do one more verse. Watch, again, the word says, first it says take heed, then it says watch. Somebody say watch. watch. You gotta watch. Some of us just, you know, especially before we come down, we just walk, we just walk through life, do whatever we want, and we have no consideration for what we're doing. We wonder why we walk in walls and we don't break our nose because we're running in the dark and have no clue what we're looking at. We have got to watch. Verse 36 says, watch, therefore, and pray that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You gotta watch. That's gonna change the title. Let's preach that again. Now understand, he's talking about one of the topics of not just cares of the side of drunkenness. It's talking about these things are gonna come upon all that dwell on the face of the earth. We're all gonna have to deal with some of these things, whether it be drunkenness, but all of us will be dealing with the cares of this life, the cares of this world, the conveniences, and things that are going to draw us away from God. But the Bible tells us, it doesn't say, it's just okay to let these things happen. Oh, well, you know what happened? I wasn't watching, oh, well, it's okay. No, he gives us a warning. And if God has given us a warning, then who's responsible? Him or us? We are responsible because he has given the warning. Watch out for the drunkenness that you can be counted whether to escape. What it says is, you can't escape drunkenness. I'm going to say that again. You can't escape drunkenness. It is not an automatic. I don't care if you have a disease called alcoholism or alcoholic. It's a disease like any other disease. And you can't escape it. And I'll get to that. That's my last scripture. So I just went from front to back. But I'm not going to leave that alone for a second. Just keep it on my notes. You can't escape drunkenness. Whether you were born that way or not. I was born a crackhead, but I'm not sucking on a crack pipe right now. I'm done with that. My life is done. I've been delivered. I am no longer involved in that behavior because even though I believe I was born that way with a chemical uh, or a biological or a chromosomal problem, that makes me more, what's the word, propensity to be a drug addict or alcoholic, I still can avoid... I still can and avoid and escape drunkenness. Do you understand? Let's move on. Now, if I avoid the drunkenness, what do I get to do according to what I just read? You're in Bible college right now. Take yourself lucky and pay for it now. You're in Bible college. I'm the instructor. Who do you get to stand before when you escape drunkenness and the cares of this world and the other word I'm going to do is? You get to stand before the Son of Man. Who wants to stand before Jesus? I want to stand, kneel, lay down. I want to be down right there. I want to be before Him, under Him, next to Him, with Him. And I have to escape drunkenness and the cares of this world. Because some of you are saying, well, I'm not a drunk. Okay, how about the cares of this world? Watch out. Watch out. The world is coming to get you. Guess what? It's back to school. I got to go. I went to back, started back to work Thursday. Monday they come, kids go back to school. It's back to school. It's back to work. Well, guess what? I'm going to start sending out some emails and some people say, look, it's back to church. It's time to get back to church. Your kids are going back to school. You got changes going on. Readjust these schedules. How about you get yourself back in the house of the Lord and rearrange your schedule? Because that's where you need to be so that you can overcome the things of this world and drunkenness and stand before the Son of Man. That excites me. Now, before I go any further, let me describe and continue on why we're preaching this. We used to have. Uh, I was approached by Brother Mark, and I'm going to tell you how this is going to go, and I'm going to continue with the sermon. I talked to Brother Mark a few years ago, a year and a half ago, and he came to me and said, I have got this, I want to start coming to your church. So he says, and I'd like to bring this ministry into your church. And uh, 
you know, I always was under the impression that God was bringing us together at some level. Anyway, I've been inviting him to actually even rent our building on our off nights in order to help him get a ministry going because he had a calling. And, and so I've been offering that to him for some time. But I also just want to get him in the house of the Lord because I knew if we get him here, he'd like it. That's all. He visited several times, but I knew if we could get him here on a regular basis, he would like it. And so when he came to me and said, I want to bring this thing here, we came up with a name for that ministry that we're bringing in. He would be the outreach director and it would be called Daily Bread. He ended up coming here and doing that for several months, almost been a year or so more, and guess what? My, my uh, suspicions were correct. He loves it here. He thinks this is the best and most accurate church in town, and he wants to be here, and he loves it here, and so we are so excited to have a mark in this church. Can I get an amen? amen? Praise the Lord. But life sometimes brings changes. And sometimes there's things that you try out that don't always work. And so as, as the years go by, we started out with feeding people here in this building five to six days a week, Monday through Friday and Sunday. And I began to recognize the destruction that was happening to the church as a result of having that indigent population here, uh, which, which were the most then destructive were the people who were drunk. The people who were involved with drunkenness or were drunkards or alcoholics. And so me being a person who had 10 years experience as a licensed substance counselor, even more experience in the ministry than that as a uh, ministerial substance abuse educator, uh, I am presently a substance, edu substance abuse educator in the city for adolescents. Uh, I don't work under license because I don't have to as long as I don't call myself a counselor. And so I'm not a drug counselor, I'm a drug abuse educator. And I have contracts with some people who send me their people, uh, and I educate them about substance abuse. Okay? Now, uh, I thought, well, this is going to be a problem. I know how to deal with this group. And as, as the weeks went on, I became increasingly frustrated and concerned about the destruction that was taking place in this church. Then I began to be more increased about the theft that was taking place in this church and the lack of respect for the house of the Lord and for the disrespect for some of the ladies that was going on, uh, people's wives being hit on. And, uh, I was sitting there with a the guy across my life and he asked my wife for her phone number. I said, bro, that's my wife. 